I actually attended the National ATSI conference which was in February and that's when I started to be more intrigued about the union and being an ATSI rep, you know, for the Northern Territory. It was really special to see some great elders there, especially because some of the rank and file hadn't met or heard of these guys before. Terry O'Shane and Kevin Torrey, Pat Dodson really gave the guys something to think about. The history, you know, the people that have made it possible um, for us to be where we are and the fact that our union has empowered people to be able to be leaders. One of the great problems we've got anyway, Aboriginal people have got, is that the wealth of this country has been predicated on the fact that it's been stolen from us and respective governments haven't actually really gone back to address that. Uh, and closing the gap, uh, that's never going to be addressed unless Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are part of the wealth generation of this country. So however we engage, it's got to be done on an equity basis. Terry O'Shane, he's a humble guy, you know, and he'd never, <laughs> he'd never talk up himself. But I've got to say, I've learned a lot as an official and as an, an activist in the area of Indigenous advancement. I wanted to try and make a difference and you know, anything's achievable if you put your mind, heart and soul to it. That's my role as well, you know. And I want to be a role model for the community. It started off as a quiet bloke, you know, that wouldn't say boo, you know, in, in the smoko room or anywhere really. And then to be doing some of the work that I'm doing, you know, like the, the Larrakia stuff at Impex, getting some young people jobs that would never have that opportunity for, before, you know and seeing that that's the same sort of stuff that this union has always done historically. Making a difference, you know, being strategic, having the freedom to be able to take on some things that really leave a legacy and have the membership behind us and making sure we're bringing them with us. That makes me so proud to be a union official in this union. We've got a national ATSI committee. It directs the union uh, in where we need to be focusing. And I think that hard work is reflective in the fact the last three times that the ACTU has handed out awards for union activity around ATSI, the MUA has taken two of the last three awards. In the last couple of years, so we've been getting around the country and building relationships with different traditional owner groups. We've been talking about how the union movement can play a part and walk alongside them. As far as getting some solid commitments out of employers and that for training and employment, there are often motherhood arrangements that don't specifically add up to anything. This many mentors. We align ourselves to those communities to say we're on your side. We're on your side to make sure that you get a fair and decent Indigenous land users agreement. We're on your side to make sure that there's proper training. We're on your side to make sure that that training leads to proper jobs with careers that have career enhancement, but also uh, career progression. Right now, Impex is being built. There's 40 or 50 years of work on that plant. 40 or 50 years work is life changing, you know, it's generational change for the people that would otherwise not have an opportunity. And that's where the union must play a role. And uh, that's what we're doing in Darwin. Agreement from impacts with the Larrakia people and the local people about jobs and training for the next 40 years. We're just in this wonderful, wonderful space with ATSI Australia, and it's a space I hope that the Maritime Union never loses now that we've got there. Pretty soon there's going to be official elections of the ATSI committee for the first time. Once this election happens, the union's just going to go in leaps and bounds in the next four years, and I can see it coming. <laughs>